Our Constitution in Crisis was a public forum held on February 26 in downtown Portland, Maine. All of the first district candidates, both Republicans and Democrats, had been invited to participate in the forum. And the purpose of the forum was to give each candidate an opportunity to discuss their views on the current state of the constitutional democracy as they see it. The forum was moderated by John Kaminsky, who's a member of the Maine Lawyers for Democracy. This is truly an historic occasion. This is the first time that any of us on the panel or any of the other folks nationally that I've talked to know of that there has been a discussion before the primaries between candidates of both parties about the United States Constitution. First of all, this building, this very hall where you are sitting, was the place that the main Constitution was negotiated and written in 1819. The building that stood on this site before this building was another house of worship. And in 1775, in the Revolutionary War, that building was shelled by the British Navy from out Portland Harbor. As a matter of fact, if you look at the chain on this chandelier, you'll see about a little bit up the chain, a 12-pound cannonball, which is the cannonball that hit that church in 1775. Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Mason, Morris, their circle had about them great courage. Those who established this republic revolted not just against a king, but against the divine right of kings. They said, against the thinking of their day, that no man or woman was established to rule on, over others by God, that the people themselves would choose their leaders, the founders of this republic feared deeply. They knew the weakness of men. They knew the weakness of individuals. And they knew the tendency to lose resolve over time. They understood the relentless pull of tyranny, the fatal attraction of authoritarianism, the blinding shimmer of the monarch's ring. Against the failings of men, they would construct a bulwark of fundamental law, and they would call it a constitution. It is in the core of that system of checks and balances, that separation of powers established with the purpose of disempowering all future presidents and vice presidents. They established, as the tool of that guardianship, the power to impeach and remove offenders against the Constitution and the Republic. Impeachment, impeachment is the central and sole protection of our rights and our privileges as citizens. Nothing else. Nothing else in that document guarantees our ability to preserve our freedom. Impeachment is the central power. James Madison, the author of the Constitution itself, the most essential author, said, it may perhaps on some occasion be found necessary to impeach the President of the United States himself. Do not fear this moment it is what we fought the revolution for. It is what America was created to do. Impeachment is not a legal tool. It is a political tool. It exists not to prosecute or try, but to uphold the Constitution. We don't do it because we don't like a George Bush or a Dick Cheney. We do it because they don't like the rule of law. You know, that's for somebody else to decide. Our responsibility as citizens, our responsibility as citizens is to remove them from office if they have not upheld their oath of office. Whether they are criminals or not by judgment of a court of law, our responsibility is to uphold the Constitution. And when do we do it? When do we do it? Wow. That's very good, thank you. <laughs> In a time of war.
The founders were exceptionally clear about this. They said they wrote the Constitution with the purpose of chaining the dogs of war. The whole concept of the Constitution was to protect against illegal and immoral war. In fact, James Madison said, no nation can preserve its freedom in the midst of continual warfare. War is in fact the true wet nurse of executive aggrandizement. In a time of war, a president will use the excuse of foreign enemies to take the freedom of American citizens. In a time of war, a president will empty the treasuries of the republic into the bank accounts of his family members and friends. In a time of war, a president will send our sons to die in distant fields of battle that are not their places to shed their blood. War is the true enemy of all that America would be. I believe in, in getting serious about the Constitution, the document itself, what was said at the founding of the Republic. And they said very clearly in the Constitutional Convention that the term high crimes and misdemeanors was meant not to narrow the arguments for impeachment, but to broaden them. Not to say, oh, it must be a high crime or a misdemeanor, but in fact to say, we want you to understand that the whole breadth of wrongs might be included in the reach of impeachment because it is such an important sacrament of the American Republic. Now, what is a misdemeanor? I suppose it's probably shooting your hunting buddy in the face. I don't know. <laughs> it's not clear exactly. But I'm pretty sure that a high crime, I'm pretty sure that a high crime, as defined by the founders, was lying about the reasons to send our sons and daughters to their deaths in a foreign war. That the founders said they wrote the Constitution to chain the dogs of war to prevent this oppression from coming upon us. This oppression has come upon us. Every 10 minutes, an innocent Iraqi is killed in this war. Every 10 minutes in a war that George Bush says will not end until his presidency is done. Every 10 hours, an American man or woman is killed in this war. A war that George Bush says will not end until his presidency ends. Every 10 days, $2 billion are removed from the American Treasury and placed in the accounts of Blackwater and Halliburton and other corporations, and that money will continue to be transferred for so long as George Bush is President of the United States. I support impeachment for a political purpose. That political purpose is to end the war in Iraq and to prevent any future President from ever bringing such an oppression upon us again. It is a definitional priority, as explained and guided by the founders. And I would close with this. Someone asked whether, George, whether the impeachment investigation of George Bush and Dick Cheney should touch upon the actions of Bill Clinton and members of the Clinton administration. Absolutely yes. And it's a wonderful thing that the Constitution of the United States says that impeachment may be brought against any individual who is accepting a benefit of office. Bill Clinton continues to accept his pension. That is a benefit of office if he is found to have committed high crimes and misdemeanors similar to those of George Bush, then yes, they both should be impeached. No doubt about that. No question. No question. No question. No question. If the people of Maine impress upon these candidates the extent to which they value the Constitution of the United States, and you will begin the process of redeeming the Republic, restoring the Constitution, and renewing the American experiment as our founders intended. Thank you.